My name is Nadia. Uh, as Joe mentioned, I run the APAC partnership team, uh, or externally known as Facebook Marketing Partners. It spans across commerce partnership, creative partnership. Uh, one of the partners that Joe mentioned today was Canva, is one of our Facebook marketing partners, messaging, ad tech, and FMP for agency. I'm coming to you from my house, from my home in Singapore, and I have two dogs uh, who could be barking, so my apology in advance if they are if you are interrupted by their barking. Firstly, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today and for spending the time with us uh, because I, I acknowledge that this has been a really difficult time for many of us and for many of you who are in other parts of um, APAC, such as Jakarta, my hometown, uh, you're probably experiencing lockdown and it must be really, really difficult and taking a lot of physical and mental health toll. On uh, so just like on personal level, I'm really happy that my family is healthy and safe. And on professional level, super grateful to be a uh, part of Facebook in this uh, in, in this time, um, especially when we are using our platform to keep businesses running, um, to to keep uh, people informed about the right information, and um, bringing people together in these times. So a little bit more about my team, uh, why Facebook invests in marketing partners. We believe that to bring the best ROI, the best results for your businesses, we need to combine both Facebook marketing partnership as the partners that we have on our platform, as well as Facebook engineering technology. So in the next um, 40 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about uh, three things. First, um, the very title of this team, uh, of this talk, which is like, why we need partners, because new challenges in marketing call for new technology and partnership. The second part is what are the trends that is accelerated by COVID that we can capture with the help of partners? And finally, the how, right? The first one is like the why partners, the two, like what areas of partnership? And number three, how partners can really, really help? How do you get started? So first, why, um, new challenges call for new ways of marketing. So marketing is changing uh, Marketing is changing really, really quickly. Like there's more pressure, more touch points, more fragmented media landscape, and yet there's less time, sometimes less money, less manpower. So in this super complex and super challenging times, it's, um, it's, it's, it added a lot of complexity and competition and pressure for all businesses, large and small. And COVID doesn't really help either. Like the change was fast and now it's even faster. This graph shows how businesses in, uh, how online purchases in Australia grew rapidly just over a few weeks period. I, I, this is uh, showing online purchases worldwide growth and it's growing at the 200% region like unheard of i also like this quote from one of l'oreal's leadership team it was in financial times that what takes years to happen now takes weeks or even days like we need to shift our businesses from offline to online really really quickly to do this like in an increasingly technical world presents really uh, uh like, like a lot of skills is required to to really sur survive in this new challenging ecosystem and no business is an island. This is a this um stats come from a BCG research. Um we they surveyed um a lot of marketing executives um and it, it says that 99% of businesses surveyed uh rely on external partners and services and solutions. So really today no business is an island. It's really hard to just build everything yourself and um because you, you actually need a diverse skill set and um, specialization in order to survive in these times. But what is uh, really interesting in this uh, survey that's um, not reflected here is that the savviest of marketers see working with others not just as a necessity, something that they have to do, but as a competitive edge. Because with um, accessing partners, other solution providers, you actually get access to leading edge engineering and creative and analytics. And to be able to tap into the specialized knowledge and leverage on the efficient resources, you can really focus on what's really, really core to the business. 
I think one of the hardest part that the marketers face based on the survey by BCG is that it's really hard to know whether you are, you're working with the right partners. And 88% believe that there is always a room for improvement for who they partner. Another point that is interesting here is that there is many, many ways to partner. In the past, partnership is more like a vendor relationship, right? Like I pay you for a service, it's an outsourced service. But now the type of um, partnership that exists is um, it could it could be internal and external at the same time. And um, it's, it's a collaboration instead of a simple outsourcing. And what, one of the hard part, I think, in choosing how to partner is also deciding what to buy, what to build, and what to uh, partner. In Facebook, we believe in partners a lot, and uh, even more so in in like in this super uh, super fast moving uh, time. Um, for example, one of the partnership that we, we do is in the launch of shops. During COVID-19, we see that a lot of businesses need to move online really, really quickly and we launch Facebook shops. In the launch of Facebook shops, we actually rely on partnership. We partner with companies such as Shopify, WooCommerce, as well as uh, local partners such as Cafe24 and The Base to launch shops and uh, reach scale really, really quickly. And the second thing is that partners is also really, really important uh, to help advertisers as on our platform to be really successful, especially in the emerging surfaces. This is an example with conversational commerce. Um, a lot of businesses want to get into this conversational commerce, but it's really hard to figure out how because the tools are just not there. But we have a lot of great partners who are able to help companies such as uh, L'Oreal, Kiel, who are who, who are able to create this conversational commerce experience with the help of a partner, Haravan. And in this example, they are actually able to increase um, increase um, sales compared to when they are not running sale, uh, run, running campaign, 22% growth in sales. And what's important is tapping into new types of uh, customers through conversational commerce. So um, the second part of the presentation, so, you know, the first part, uh, partners are really, really important. It's really complex. You got to collaborate with others. You got to work with partners. And partnership is not just a necessity. It is a competitive advantage. The second part is the what. What are the opportunities that you can really capture with partners, especially um, in, in with the emerging trends due to COVID? So there are five trends that I want to highlight here. I think these five trends are, uh, we're seeing this in APAC, very, very um, clearly in APAC, but also in the rest of the world. So the first one, we know this, a lot of people are trying new products and services online for the first time. Research from McKinsey showed that um, about 60%, on average, 60% of global consumers say that they've tried a new store, site, or new way of um, buying uh, through this pandemic. And in, in some of the markets in our region, like Indonesia, my hometown, it is 91%. So I think my my own personal hypothesis is that in a even in, in the emerging economy, they are they are even more game to try the, uh, to try this, right? And a part of the survey, uh, another survey showed that one in two global consumers surveyed expect to shop online more in the future. Like, and what what is really exciting is that um, this trend is here to stay. It takes 66 days to create new habits, um, the experts said, but we've been here for six months and I don't think it's, it's going to go away anytime soon. My husband is a physician and he's a doctor in, in Singapore general. And he's expecting this to last till next year. I think a lot of experts believe in the same same thing as well. So, um, and like, what is the opportunity that is brought with this? Um, it's time to try new things to bring businesses from offline to online. One of the example that we saw here is um, food and beverages moving to conversational commerce, moving online in this time. Like, I think. One year ago, if uh, or, or like January this year, somebody told me it's like, oh, what do you think about about buying your food from through Facebook messaging? I'll be like, well, that that will be nice, but it, it's I don't think it's really really hard to get people to change their habits so quickly. But in this example, uh, we have Thai chocolate factory restaurant. They are a chocolate restaurant. We shifted their sales from online 
purely uh, from offline physical sales to purely online through Messenger with the help of our founder, Pitch365. And they are not the only one. We have other examples of uh, like people who sell lobster online through conversational commerce in Vietnam. The interesting thing about Thai Chocolate Factory is that they are actually seeing an increase in the number of sales that they have online and an increase in customers and their ability to reach new customers through this online sales. The second trend that I want to highlight is the growth of uh, cross-border shopping. I think one interesting fact that we are seeing is that despite the contraction in the economy in general, we're seeing an increase in online cross-border commerce um, in, in not just on Facebook, but uh, across the world. So online commerce is going to grow and is going to continue to grow. But selling online is hard. Selling online cross-border is even harder. Thinking about like, how are you going to ship the product? What is the taxation implication? How are you going to take care of payment? And how are you going to optimize campaign in the new market? Targeting, optimization, etc. And one of the partner, uh, one of the company that we work with is actually uh, Queen Shop, as a fashion company who is in Taiwan and thinking, uh, and the, one of the ways for them to grow is to expand to new markets in Southeast Asia. And they work with a partner called Shopline. They are, they are a cross-border partner that we have who are, um, who are able to take care, not just the techni technical expertise of establishing an online presence through e-commerce website and run new campaigns in this market, but also on the logistics side, like the full stack of commerce, which is translation, currency, banking, storage, etc. And in doing so, they are able to ramp up their business really, really quickly to go to, uh, to Malaysia and Singapore. And they're seeing 82% month-on-month growth because they, 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 they are engaging with a partner. And I think another one that um, is really important is that because of the efficiency that they see in, in, in the way they operate, you're also seeing a very good efficiency in the ad spend. And you know, like this is beneficial for both the partner the, who, the, who, who works building the website and uh, taking care of the payment they, uh, and for, uh, for the advertiser as well as for Facebook. So, you know, having partners with us is really a win-win-win um, collaboration. So first one was trying new things. It's going here, here to stay. Second, rise of cross-border. And the third one I'm very excited is the influence of creators. With COVID, with the lockdown, it is really hard to do big scale production of creative. It's really hard to do an ad shoot. So one of the one of one of the things that we are seeing is that the demand for creators and remote production increases. And we have actually built during this period a virtual product launch partnership ecosystem. It consists of like partners like Genero, who is able to produce um, remotely with the help of like tens and thousands of freelancers that they have on their platform, as well as creators to drum up demand for virtual product launches. One of the, my, my favorite example, one of my favorite examples is actually uh, Vamp and Huawei. So Vamp and Huawei work to, to launch uh, the, the, the new, the, their new model, which is uh, a Y9 phone in the Philippines with uh, influencers. And they are, and they, they see very positive results. Uh, Forty-one percent lift in brand awareness through influencers, as well as eighty-two percent lift in action intent, in, intent to purchase for that phone. And now they are running a campaign with their P40, and this is not just in one country, but across many, many countries, um, and with hundreds of influencers. The results are not out yet, but I think one of the thing that where our partners come in, where BAM comes in, is not just in the production itself, but also in taking care of the choosing of the creators, the matching part, the measurement piece, the quality control, as well as the logistics part. I imagine having to ship phones to many, many different countries, as well as hundreds of creators. So like partners enable scale, enable specialization, um, and taking care of the 
the logistics, lo lo uh, taking care of other things that is non-core to the business. So creators, that's like the next trend that we can capture due to this and uh, this is COVID. And I think partners can really help to scale and ramp up the, um, the adoption really, really quickly for your businesses. The fourth one is the rise of messaging. I think um, with uh, people on lockdown, we are seeing an increase in messaging over uh, month on month. We see 50% increase in messaging. This is the number from, uh, from March when the lockdown started. And um, this trend continues to stay. And we are seeing this not only for people to people messaging, but also in people to business messaging. Right, because two in three say that they are likely to buy from businesses that they can message. They are really disappointed when businesses do not respond to the messages. And one of the trends that's really exciting in this region, and this is the hotbed of conversational commerce, is uh, that they are expected to maintain and increase their spending on conversational commerce. Just to remind everyone, on conversational commerce is actually buying and selling that happens on messenger platform, either Facebook Messenger or um, WhatsApp. But going in, uh, but going into tapping into this new surface is really complex, right? Imagine if you just have seven messages a day, and get taking seven messages order. It's really easy to do it on a native platform. Imagine having seven hundred of this every day. You gotta hire people, figuring out how to do order management, queue management of those conversations, figuring out payment, etc. And this is where partners come in. They provide that workflow management as well as the full commerce stack that is related to conversational commerce for advertisers. And another thing that is really interesting is that conversational commerce is merging with what we call the, the live shopping trend that's happening. And it's like even more so during this COVID. So uh, one of the partners that we work with is actually Shop Plus. It's a partner that is based in um, Taiwan, but they have a huge base in Thailand, which is their core market. And they work with Looney, this fashion store, um, who has an online presence and mostly coming from um, live, live uh, from conversational commerce. Here they, they do their sales using um, Facebook Live. And if you imagine doing Facebook Live and taking orders from live, where um, you know I'm 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 one of those live shopper who love doing uh, shopping through through this video. You just comment like, oh, I want this item and I want to have it in this size and in this quantity. Capturing all that free text is really difficult. And partners like Shop Plus have the capability, the engineering capability and the technology that identifies the keywords, putting it in and automatically launch a messenger to a person who's ordering such as me to say that, okay, you know, we have this in your basket. This is how you're going to pay. And this is how uh, we're going to uh, send us your, your address and and. And this really helps Looney to actually scale their business really, really quickly because they don't have to deal with all this logistics. All right. And then the fifth trend that we are seeing is that we, we see a uh, like a we see an opportunity for business to actually really shine during this time when uh, when people are uh, pe people are looking for brands to um, to do good for the world. One of the research that uh, we saw is that two in three people surveyed globally. Uh, this is from Edelman Trust Biometer, say that the way that brand respond during this crisis will impact the way that they perceive they, whether they, buy, they will buy from the brand in the future. So this is an opportunity for all of us to show care for the community, to really show up our customers and our partners even work and they show up during this time as well they work with company uh, with with companies to, to to boost their uh social presence as well as with ngos and this in this example was vamp again with world health organization this is a hand washing campaign because hand washing is really important during uh covid and they use creators to actually get um, the work going. So they have creators who are showing how washing hands, influencers and creators showing how to wash hands, and then tagging their friends and creating that morality. 
So five trends. We talk about one, people are trying new things. Two, the rise in CBB, 18% increase despite the GDP shrinking. Three, the rise of influencers. Four, messaging, right? Conversational commerce. And five, show up for your customers. Do good for the world. That's the what, the five what opportunities that we can capture with partners. Finally, the how. How can Facebook marketing partners help? So we, we believe that we have a rich ecosystem of partners where you can find solutions that you need, a bespoke solution that you need for the future that you want. And we, we are still building that partnership ecosystem. So if there are partners out there who are interested to work with us, please reach out to my team. Um, Facebook marketing partners. And if you are a business who's looking for partners, who's looking for new solutions, you have a resource here called facebook.com slash business slash marketing partners. Just know that you are, you have us, you're not alone in this journey in figuring out what is the future of marketing in figuring out who should be your partner and to build that future of marketing. So thank you. So it's been really a pleasure spending the time with you, and I hope you find the, the talk useful.